What's up guys, welcome to this R session. So for today, we're just gonna be looking at limiting and stationary distributions. Um, so if you wanna brush up any theory, uh, you maybe need to look at the theory for stationary and limiting distributions, obviously, uh, but then also solving linear systems of equations. Um, as regards R code, uh, again, we're just gonna be writing functions, so maybe brush up on how to write functions in R. Um, and then also for the linear systems part, maybe what you want to do is check out the help documentation for the solve function in R. So you just type question mark, solve, and you'll, you'll see the help documentation. Right, so let's jump in. Okay, cool. So let's have a look at our template file. Uh, what have I given you today? Um, right, so as always, we have an overarching goal. Um, and for this case, it'll be write functions for calculating the limiting distrib and stationary distributions. Uh, use the skeleton code below to complete the functions and various tasks. Okay, uh, and then we're given a test case Markov chain with a transition probability matrix given by gamma. Okay, so a simple three by three, um, nothing too heavy there. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the tasks. Um, so task one, uh, use the updating equation for the marginal probabilities to analyze behavior of the transition probabilities. Okay, so T-step transition probabilities. Okay, so, um, and then I'll give you a function body there already, uh, semi-populated, it's called limiting dist. Okay, so we're gonna use the updating equations to try and figure out what the limiting distribution is. Okay, so we're just gonna evaluate them and maybe assign a value to the, or set of values to the limiting distribution. Task two, uh, write a function which calculates the stationary distribution of a Markov chain using the result from Zucchini, McDonald, and Langrock, um, 2017. Uh, your function must take only the transition probability matrix as an argument. Um, evaluate the stationary distribution for the test case transition probability matrix. Okay, so that's one of the results we had from our theory lecture. Okay, so I've given you a function already. Um, it's really good as a function. Also semi-populated. Cool. And then finally, task three, um, determine the mean first return times for all states of market chain with the test case transition probability matrix. Okay. Right, so let's kick off the analysis with task one. Um, so task one is again, use the updating equation for the marginal probabilities to evaluate or uh, to analyze the behavior of the T-step transition probabilities. Okay, so um, these are just the standard updating equations we, uh, we always use to calculate the marginal distribution. Okay, so let's look at limiting this. It's a function, it takes arguments gamma, so the transition probability matrix D naught, so that'll be the initial distribution. And then it's going to evaluate that updating equation um, for steps number of times. Okay, so first thing we do is we create an empty column vector. Um, so we go matrix. And then we'll go NA. And then we'll go done. Okay, so we read off the from the first dimension of the transition probability matrix. Um, how many possible states there are. And there we go. Okay, so we write that as a matrix, so empty column vector, and then um, that's gonna be carrying our calculation all the time, right? So, uh, well, we first need to assign the initial distribution to that, so um, delta one, okay, first column, it's just a column vector, uh, is gonna be D naught. Okay, next we're gonna create storage. So again, we're gonna create an empty matrix, an empty matrix. Okay, which has similar dimensions to before. Okay, so we read off the um, first dimension from the first dimension of the transition probability matrix, and then how many times are we gonna evaluate this equation and store the result? So that's what the storage is for. Well, we're gonna go steps plus one. Okay, why? Because we're evaluating at time naught, one, two, three, etc. Okay, and then obviously for the first element in that matrix, we again need to assign um, the initial distribution to that. Okay, so let me just line up the column the comments here. Okay, cool. Now, let's evaluate the updating equation for the marginal probabilities. How are we gonna do that? Well, we have a little for loop and we'll go for T uh, in uh, one, two steps, okay. And we need to iterate, so we need to update um, the marginal distribution. So we'll say delta equals what? So that's going to be transpose uh, delta. Yeah. Post multiplied by gamma. 
Okay, and then we just need to transpose that result again to get a column vector in R. Okay, so that's our iteration. Once it's updated, we need to restore that result again. So we're just going to copy from above and then change the index. Okay, so we're going to go, um, okay, the T plus one uh, element. Okay, cool. Um, store T plus one equals delta. Cool, that makes sense. Let's just line up the comments. Okay, then um, presumably if we've had enough steps, um, we might want to use the last iteration of that um, calculation and assign that set of values to pi, right? The so-called limiting distribution. So if this sequence converges, um, then we can assign that set of set of values to uh, pi. Okay, so let's do that. So let's go, that's just gonna be pi is equal to delta. Um, and then uh, what we're gonna do is just gonna give it row names. So the way we're gonna do that, um, we're gonna go paste not. Okay, and what is, paste function do again well it takes a character vector and then it's going to append a sequence of uh, indices to that so states and then we're going to go one two i don't know dim gamma you can read that off of the first dimension there right so that's just going to give it row names and then we want to return a list okay so we can return all the things we calculated in that list first thing we're going to return is pi so pi equals pi, uh, store equals store, and then I guess steps. Okay guys, so I think I, d I don't think I've mentioned this before, but the reason I go pi equals pi and store equals store is that actually names that element in the list pi and this element in the list store and this element in the list steps. If you were just to sort of put pi, store, and steps, then it'll just It'll you want to have a named list. You, know, you have to then call it by its number, with its index in that list. Um, okay, so let's run this uh, for. We're going to store it in a list called res not. We evaluate that function. Which arguments does it take? Okay, we already have a test case transition probability matrix in gamma. Uh, then we're going to D naught, uh, we don't have a D naught, right? Uh, we need to think of an initial distribution. Um, okay, well, if this um, if this limiting distribution exists, it'll be independent of the initial um, distribution, right? So let's just go start off in state one. Maybe that's also easier to interpret. And then I'm just gonna evaluate this for 10 steps. Okay, so uh, let's evaluate that, run it, see what it spits out. Okay, so copy. Cool, so we run our code and what do we see? It returns a pi. Um, okay, so uh, it says that the limiting distribution was assigned as 0 0.5, 0, and 0 0.5. Okay, and you can see the states to which those correspond. Okay, so those probably sum to one. Are we satisfied with this? Well, one problem we see is that if we look at the store matrix, so where we stored all of our calculations, if we look at the history of the calculation, okay, now obviously we start out in state one, then we definitely go to state two according to the transition probability matrix. Then once there, you definitely go to either state one or three, 50-50 um, probability, but once you're in those, you definitely go back to two. Okay, so what keeps happening here? So that calculation keeps cycling between two sets of values. Okay, so my question here is then, does it make sense to assign that set of uh, values as the limiting distribution? Okay, um, well, I guess if you look at the notes, what you may think, find is that, okay, well, you could think of maybe taking, um, you know, taking the limit as, uh, T times D, where D is the period of this chain. So clearly this is a, a periodic chain because it's cycling between two sets of values. Um, this periodicity is clearly two. Um, uh, yeah, if, if, if you take T times D and take, then take T to the limit, then maybe you can assign a limit to that quantity, but maybe it doesn't make sense to talk of a single set of values being assigned to that limit. 
Okay, so the limiting distribution in this case, not, not as useful as one might have hoped, um, but at, at least we've established one thing, and that is that this chain is cyclical. Okay, cool, so we have a periodic chain. Let's go on to task two. Write a function which calculates the stationary distribution of a Markov chain using the result from Zucchini, McDonald, and Langrock. Use your function. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Right, so what was the result that we were talking about? Um, okay, so from your notes, uh, where do I have it? Get the exact expression. Right, so I had that alternatively, one may use the following result, and I give the reference, and it says that the vector delta with non-negative elements is a stationary distribution with transition probability matrix gamma, if and only if, uh, delta transpose, um, post multiplied by some matrix, i minus gamma plus u um, equals a row vector of ones. Okay, so where i is just an identity matrix um, and u is a matrix of ones. Cool, so that gives us a nice neat system of equations which we can try to solve um, for the stationary distribution. Cool, and we're gonna do exactly that using this function um, delta underscore ZML. So the ZML is for the reference there. Okay, I've already have it that we only have the gamma argument as an, we only have gamma as the argument, um, and then I give you some steps there. Okay, cool. So, uh, first thing first, uh, it says infer dimensions. Okay, we already used to this now so let's go from gamma read off the first so first dimension and that tells you how many states there on the chain then we need to set up the equations and solve okay so what does that mean so if you look at the result um, you'll see that that's just a linear system of equations right and we're trying to find delta okay so maybe it's a bit easier to see if you transpose both sides of that equation Right, then you get it in a sort of familiar form and we need to solve for delta. Okay. But in any case, we need to set up that matrix uh, I minus gamma plus U and then also the row vector of ones and then you know, we can manipulate it into a system that we can solve. Okay, so first things first, U. What was U? Oh, so uppercase U now, not lowercase U as we usually do. So create a matrix of ones, which is U by U, confusingly, again, I somehow run into bad notation, despite trying very hard not to. Um, so uppercase U, matrix of ones, um, and then we'll have a row vector of ones, so matrix, again one, and it's gonna be one by U. Right, and then we can solve for delta, at least I claim to. Okay, so the way we're gonna solve for delta is we're gonna solve that system numerically using the solve function in R, okay? so. If you type question mark solve, okay, you're gonna get two possibles. Okay, we'll solve a system of equations. Okay, that's the one we're looking for. So this is a generic function that solves the equation A and then matrix multiplication with X equals B, so the familiar linear system that we, that we know, um, where B can either be a vector or a matrix. Okay, that's cool. And then it says arguments. So A is a square numeric complex matrix containing coefficients of a linear system, logical matrix, blah, blah, blah. B, a numerical complex vector or matrix giving the right-hand side of the linear system. If missing, okay, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, cool. Uh, so let's use the solve function. Now we need to figure out what A and B are. Well, if we transpose both sides of that equation, okay, then A is just gonna be the transpose of um, an identity matrix. How do we get an identity matrix? Well, we're gonna go diag U. So if you wanna know what diag does, let's go diag three, for example. So that gives you an identity matrix, three by three identity matrix. Okay, so we'll go diag U minus gamma plus, then we've already created U, right? And we're gonna transpose whatever that result is, okay, because we transpose both sides of that system. And then we're gonna set that equal to the right-hand side, which is the transpose of a row vector of ones. So we just go sort of redundantly transpose ones. Um, 
Okay, so that'll solve the system. It'll find delta. It'll assign those values to this vector called delta. And then oh yeah, I've already populated the or assigned names to that row vector. And then we want this thing to return a list with something called delta. Um, and it must take the values delta that we just calculated from that vector. Cool. So delta ZML, um, this is now going to be able to calculate our transition, oh, stationary distribution. Okay, so we're going to go res uh, underscore one, and we're going to try and evaluate oh, no. and evaluate that equation for our test case. Uh, let's go gamma. Cool. Um, so this works. Res one. Let's see what the result looks like. And there you go. So it returns the stationary distribution for you. Excellent. Now you can go check this by hand and you'll see that um, this is indeed the correct stationary distribution. Um, so yeah, nice little neat, neat little function to calculate the stationary distribution. And I guess that's that. Right, let's go on to task three. Determine the mean first return times for all states of a Markov chain with the test case transition probability matrix. Okay, now there are a number of ways in which we, one can do this, right? So obviously we can, we can go the generating function route, um, we can go the numerical route, and then we just need to evaluate it for long enough. Um, but, you know, both of those methods are quite complicated. Um, well, we had this nice neat result, uh, which said, okay, well, actually the stationary distribution and the mean first return times are, are related, right? And we know they're related, well, we need to check for the specification of the Markov chain. Okay, so let's maybe check uh, this particular Markov chain. We already know that it's um, it's periodic. Okay, so that's not good. So we know it's not ergodic, um, but is there anything we can recover? Well, we also knew from our theory that, um, well, if it's irreducible, um, then there will be a unique stationary distribution. Okay, and then we'll have that nice result uh, which says how, how the mean first return times and uh, the stationary distribution are related. Okay, so maybe we need to check that. Okay, how do we check that? Well, if you are adept at this already, you can just check the transition matrix uh, and determine whether it's reducible or not. Alternatively, and as I always advocate, what you can do um, is you can just draw the transition probability matrix, right? How do we do that? Well, you could do it by hand. Or you could go back to the code we wrote earlier, borrow your function for drawing the transition diagram from there. Okay. And then just go draw underscore TD gamma, and it'll draw the transition diagram for you. Cool. Now, let's look at our transition diagram. And what do we see? Okay, so we can almost see the cyclical nature there, but more importantly, what we can see that, well, all states are mutually accessible. Um, so this means this chain is irreducible. This means there is a unique stationary distribution. And this means that, well, we can figure out what the mean first return times are directly from the stationary distribution. Cool. How do we do that? Well, we've already calculated the stationary distribution. And we just go one divided by whatever those values are. And we can simultaneously calculate the mean first return time for all of these states of the chain. Okay, and we see those as four, two, and four. Okay, and again, if you look at the cyclical nature of the chain, it sort of makes sense that those are multiples of two as well. Okay, um, so that's that for this one. Um, I'll, as always, include some homework problems for you to do, and then I'll see you in the next one.